अच्छे स्पीकर आई बिलीव बुद्ध ही डज नॉट हिंड एनी इंट्रोडक्शन Thank you, sir. May I invite Dr. Hanjman Barun Sharma, sir, and BHU Varanasi. He is a renowned sports physician and a wonderful sports person himself. So, by not taking much time, he has lot to be told about him. But uh, I think we all know him very well. His numerous publications, and uh, presently is working in BHU Varanasi. So, may I request Dr. Barun Sharma to please uh, begin his talk. He'll be providing us guidance from clinical perspective on exercise and return to sports after COVID-19. Dr. Sharma, please. Thank you very much, Madam. Uh, so, because of paucity of time, I will be focusing only on few ex. क्या हुआ? अच्छा, check करना है. नहीं नहीं जा रहे. अच्छा ठीक है ठीक है सो आई एम डॉक्टर रंजबम बरुण शर्मा सो आई विल बी फोकसिंग मोर ऑन स्पोर्ट्स मेडिसिन एज यू हैव बी नोइंग स्पोर्ट्स एंड एक्सरसाइज मेडिसिन इज यू नो वी वी फोकस इनटू द टू थिंग टू थिंग दैट इज द द परफॉर्मेंस एस्पेक्ट दैट इज द स्पोर्ट्स मेडिसिन एज वेल एज द क्लिनिकल एक्सरसाइज इंटरवेंशन दैट इज द एक्सरसाइज मेडिसिन एंड आवर स्पीकर हैज ऑलरेडी स्पोकन रिलेटेड विद द परफॉर्मेंस सो आई विल बी टचिंग लिटिल बिट ऑन द फिजियोलॉजिकल एस्पेक्ट बिकॉज़ दिस इज अ कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑफ फिजियोलॉजी एंड लिटिल बिट अबाउट यू नो the injury management so i may have to skip uh, some slide and have to go a little bit faster because of time and i will be since exercise medicine is also focus on 90% of the sedentary people so we have to know uh, you know the real culprit of the covid 19 because the covid covid 19 basically is because of the metabolic uh, abnormality and ab metabolic abnormality the most important factor is diabetes and obesity and all of this thing and we already know that the dead red you know the linear response is always there with the dead red uh, you know and the covid 19 and regarding which type of the fat uh, is being in infected by the covid virus we can Uh, you know uh, 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 you know suspect uh, what kind of the response may be there like for example visceral fat is important uh, for uh, you know uh, different response mainly the inflammatory response and the compilation of the, all these things we have done in our society and we have recently published the papers regarding that and also the long covid is very important in case of the player because you know up to say uh, 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 for uh, say up to four weeks or you know uh, uh, from 12 weeks you have to categorize whether uh, you know the persistence of the symptoms sign and symptoms whether it is present or not and the most important point one has to understand for uh, general people uh, is uh, visceral obesity because of the lingering of uh, continuation of you know uh, the inflammatory marker uh, uh, is mainly responsible for uh, long covid and the uh, low cardiovascular fitness and uh, exercise is the medicine also and there are so many biochemical pathway and there are so many publication theoretical so i am not going into the detail and exercise can be used as intervention for return to play and as well as return to physical activity as far as uh, normal population is concerned so we have compiled from our society there are different molecular and biochemical basis are there we have recently published this paper like what are the you know the factors which are responsible for the severity of the covid like physical inactivity obesity and low fitness and all that stuff the one point which one has to understand is always that uh, you know a vo2 max or cpet you know it has to be incorporated in every clinician clinic also because cardio respiratory fitness just before two years before the pandemic has been known to be a major risk factor you know for severity even more than uh, uh, diabetes and hypertension that is uh, you know uh, surprising and pandemic and uh, you know we are already facing the pandemic of physical inactivity and obesity and they are mutually reciprocally you know uh, activating to one another and low cardio respiratory fitness is one of the linking mechanism for diversity and all that stuff with the severity of the covid 19 so this thing and exercise intervention has to be done there may be different type of exercise it may be aerobic exercise it may be rest and training or all that stuff uh, and and the most important thing is all this i am not going because we have already published this is freely available you can go through different the mechanism from our society 
So the challenges one has to focus regarding the exercise intervention because exercise is good exercise is medicine everybody knows it, but exercise can contain some risk factor also. So one has to focus in that pattern. And COVID nineteen we already know that it does not limit to the card, uh, you know respiratory system. It has lots of other abnormal. Like for example, just take an example of the heart, cardio, respiratory, fit and muscle. This is important for VO two max. Just giving an example, like you know fixed principle. We know that how we are going to calculate the view mathematically. You 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 can just see how COVID nineteen can affect uh, the uh, you know the the VO two max. But the most important point which I have already focused is uh, regarding the potential benefit of the exercise. Exercise has all the uh, you know just by giving the prescription in a very specific way we can target the the different uh, you know uh, the abnormal who are affected by the COVID nineteen. So countering can be done by precise exercise precept that's why uh, sports and exercise medicine and uh, uh, exercise physiologists one has to understand the principle of the exercise prescription so uh, so uh, they, these are the potential and these are the countering factors so let's go something about the data and publish that see uh, i am just giving few this thing uh, so so these are the these are the body fat percentage body fat flexibility and uh, you know anaerobic uh, uh, the power ma ma maximum uh, ma measure from ras that is running associated anaerobic swim test so here you can see that one is just before the covid uh, and and uh, this one one is the uh, before the covid and two is just after six uh, six weeks apart after you know they have been gradually started and none of this player or you know young players they, uh, this none of they do not they have not suffered any kind of the serious issue so all their symptoms have resolved within four weeks so that uh, within three to four weeks so uh, so and this is the uh, no covid and covid means the player which has a history of covid and this is a not covid and you can see that earlier uh, you know there was no state this is significant, but here you can see that uh, two two means after six week, uh, the, uh, the between the COVID and a non COVID, you know there is the you know uh, what you say the the body fat in increases and the flexibility decreases and and uh, although the power was not uh, significant, but one can say that since it may be because of the detraining also because if you don't train then detraining effect will happen and here that, that's why we have done the analysis not only uh, you know between the group but also within the group and you can see that the statistical significance is there like for example non covid also statistical significance if every parameter is there the reduction is there in body fat uh, sorry increase in body fat is there reduction in flexibility is there in covid as well as non covid but the importance is you know uh, uh, there was reduction was more uh, you know uh, in those player who have reported uh, to have suffered from the covid 19 so this is important let's go to the you know Cardio respiratory fitness or the endurance parameters. This is the VO2 max one and two, re re resting heart rate and heart rate recovery, you know, at three minutes and six minutes. And you can see that the VO2 max, although before the COVID, there was no difference. The players because they have taken from the same hockey players so so you can see that the, the significant difference was developed only after uh, you know the, the uh, after six week when uh, we can see uh, say, uh, say that there are those players who have uh, reported to have suffered from COVID and and here was the same thing also heart rate recovery also it was increased uh, and uh, resting heart rate also increased and you can see that the heart rate recovery also uh, say decreases and significantly decrease was there in three minute and six minute after maximum uh, you know cycle ergometer test so you can see that uh, you, you can say that uh, the covid 19 uh, you know although uh, clinically symptoms was not there they are all okay fine to be they have been uh, allowed to, but some lingering effect was always there so that is important and here also same thing uh, one can say that it is because of the detraining effect and that's why we have done the analysis statistically significant was there Reduction was there in the non-COVID player also, but the thing is, uh, when you compare it, then reduction was more in in those player uh, who has uh, re reported, uh, you know, to be suffering from to COVID nineteen. Same thing. This is the uh, what you call the muscle pain. The muscle fitness is very important. We tend to forget. Uh, we we tend to focus only on the cardiorespiratory fitness, but muscular fitness, muscle centric medicine is very important. And you can see that, that this is the hand grip dynamometer left and right. Statistical significance is there. I'm not going to the detail, and this is the you know vertical jump uh, in order to measure you know the lower uh, limb peak power. This is the what do you call it? the agility test five zero five agility test, which is very specific for the field hockey, and this is the ball hitting speed, how fast they are hitting the ball. Oh. The hockey ball, and you can. This is the sitting short put uh, test uh, for measuring the upper limb. So we have uh, for the hand grip also for the upper limb 
Masculine also, the, the, although there, uh, uh, there are a few uh, non statistically significant, but you can majorly see that, you know, those players who have uh, reported to suffer from COVID, they uh, reported, uh, they were found to have lesser uh, muscle strength and agility also. And from the theoretical background, we already know that detraining effect is there, flexibility and all that stuff, but detraining effect has less effect on anaerobic stuff and the flexibility. Uh, uh, Desility. They are relatively. This is from our theoretical knowledge. But same same thing. Reduction was there in both. That means the training effect is there, but reduction is was more in case of the player with the COVID-19 history. So, uh, so why six weeks was uh, uh, this thing? Because without the COVID-19, we have published this paper in long back in uh, you know uh, Journal of Strength and Conditioning, and you can see that. Without the COVID-19, this six-week training was sufficient to increase, you know, VO2 max and all that stuff. But, but in the same duration when COVID was there, something was, uh, it may be because of the detraining, it may be because of the, and we already saw that the, those players who are suffering from COVID-19, apart from the detraining, they have some lingering effect of this uh, COVID issue, although clinically uh, fit. <laughs> clinically normal. So uh, for, from the injury side, uh, you, you can say uh, uh, that I'm not going to the detail of all the injury. Within the sixth week of the reported, uh, we have uh, seen lots of lower limb chronic injury. Overuse in, uh, injury was more in case of the, uh, 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 sorry, this is uh, wrong, I think. Uh, this color system is uh, wrongly plotted. It, it, it should be COVID and it should be non-COVID. And upper limb, uh, the, the, the chronic injury was related to same back problem, uh, back problem and uh, GIT issues and uh, respiratory infection was uh, prevalent. But the one uh, one thing we have to understand is uh, uh, as far as the chronic injury was concerned, it may be tendinopathy, it may be fasciopathy, it may be, you know, a patellar tendinopathy, it may be Achilles tendinopathy in a hamstring problem. So, so the, that problem was, uh, we, we noted, and treatment is given, although, but we have not yet uh, collected the data pre and post here, and also collected the data between how it responds to the exercise therapy and all the therapy, and just going uh, uh, into the some of the few effects uh, for those who want, because uh, eccentric training is very much, you must be knowing the mechanical transaction mechanism of eccentric training. And eccentric training, we have already applied this, the Nordic uh, Hemsinkel, uh, very famous for, you know, all the injury prevention, as well as the, uh, you know, later return to play. Uh, uh, where eccentric training has to be done. And this is the Alfred and Hill, uh, Hill Drop uh, Protocol. We already know that for, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the mid uh, insertion, uh, uh, the endropathy. And we can also they incorporate the Copenhagen uh, deductor eccentric uh, the exercise uh, for uh, deductor problem and decline bodies. We already know that this is for the patellar tendinopathy. So we have already in included this exercise therapy, but I am not presenting the data here. So the response uh, we have to analyze and we have to check whether uh, the presence of, uh, you know, the history of the COVID-19 has any effect on the recovery or not. This one has to understand as far as, you know, injury uh, prevention and injury treatment is concerned. Uh, and since uh, I'm not going into the drugs and all this thing, I'm just want to uh, uh, focus on the physiological intervention, non-pharmacological physiological intervention and exercise intervention is the topmost. You all must be knowing. So COVID-19, one has to understand the balance has to be maintained because exercise is known for so many good effects, but exercise has some problem also COVID-19 because some inherent thing. So a balance has to be maintained and I have uh, focused in some of the thing, things, but there are lots of literature where, you know, if you do exercise high if especially high intensity exercise like viral myocarditis it can be done uh, like uh, viral uh, you know post uh, fatigue symptoms and all these things is important detraining we already know that because, because you know if you limit the, the exercise it, the, the infection risk will decrease but what will happen to the training adaptation detraining will happen so you have to see whether tapering has to be done but it's not go into the detraining side and and uh, uh, this uh, this famous uh, you know this curve we already know that exercise in high intensity exercise is known for respiratory infection and all that stuff but it has been you know this has been uh, proven uh, 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 sorry the, it has been regarded because it is not proven yet in COVID-19 and other related. And some of the recent papers, they have said that, uh, you know, it may be SFA, yeah, not inverted. It may be SFA where high intensity load is there. Uh, the infection risk may decrease. So exercise, even if high intensity, if done, uh, you know, appropriately under a supervision, it's still a medicine. So you don't have to fear with all these things. So some myth has to be uh, this thing. And myocarditis is very important. Five to 10 for the sudden cardiac that may happen because of the myocarditis. And, and still it is a very 
very rare com com complication, but sports, uh, you know, uh, physician and physiologists, they have to understand because some risk is there. Sudden cardiac death means khatam. So that's why one has to understand. And myocarditis, the most important point for myocarditis, one has to understand it mimic overtraining syndrome. And overtraining syndrome, we already know that there's so many presence. The mild and, uh, you know, subacute and myocarditis and sub, uh, you know, uh, pericarditis mimic the symptoms of overtraining. So you have to understand how you are going to differentiate clinically as well as physiologically in, in order to, because the treatment is different, uh, the, the everything is different because it may present with the muscle soreness and all that stuff. And, uh, and you can see that, uh, 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 maybe chest pain, you know, on lying on the left side and all these things, one has to understand. And the most important one, rule of thumb, one has to apply, uh, they apply that if, if you are suspected something for a, you know, uh, for clearance to, uh, even for a mild exercise, you have to understand that at least 10 days or two weeks has to be given uh, where no symptoms must be there. And, and, and the rest and exercise we generally add after the recovery and all that stuff. And, and the most important rule of thumb is myocarditis reported. If you do cardiac MRI and myocardial is reported, no exercise within six months. How you go, uh, I mean, six months, how come? It is based upon the pathological finding. Research is yet to be done on this number. Pericarditis for at least three months. And that's why our society has come up with a certain guideline how we are going to do it. And uh, we have published some papers also, like, for example, risk stratification, like I've, I've already focused, cardiorespiratory fitness is important. Risk stratification for normal individual also, just as a clinical component, whether it will be going to the, you know, adverse effect of the COVID-19 or, or whether it will recover or not. And, and for the players, the most important thing, RPE, hmm, rating of perceived exertion is simplest thing. If very high rating of perceived exertion suspect was out, you have to do it. You have to isolate him and do start doing and uh, and all this thing. thing and, uh, and this is the algorithm where we have published. And the most important few tips is, uh, uh, you know, the asymptomatic player, COVID positive, asymptomatic has to be restrained for at least two weeks. And, and, and if there is, uh, you know, uh, COVID positive is there, but pneumonia and myocarditis is not there, then at least two to four, yeah, number two to four and four to five weeks. See, we have gone into the pathology of how all this thing is important is cytotoxic, you know, a T cell response, they, they require at least three to four weeks. So that's why, uh, you know, by taking into consideration, we have research has to be done. Uh, this is just a proposal from our uh, the, this society, but it has been validated with lots of research, lots of publication from other society as well, and and that's why these are all uh, stuff. Time here, Abhi. No, yeah, take So 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 all this thing, I'm not not going to the detail, and this is one of the publication, the most important few tips. Uh, athlete with no symptoms, no symptoms, no COVID positive, hai, all this thing return to play under a supervision can be done, and if if COVID uh, positive was there, it has to be symptoms free for at least one seven to ten days before gradual return to activity is done. And e ECG, 12 lead ECG has to be done. And if e ECG is abnormal, it is there, straight they go for echocardiography. What we are looking is just sign of some fibrosis, hmm, myocarditis. And if echocardiography positive is there, you have to go to the cardiac MRI with lead gadolinium enhancement. It is the gold standard in order to detect the fibrosis. And that fibrosis is important because if fibrosis is there, arrhythmia will happen. Ventricular arrhythmia is one of the major risk factor for sudden cardiac death. So this one has to understand that is the, the point which we are focusing. And so all the players which we are hospitalized with COVID-19 aggressive uh, you know, this thing has to be done and, and, and cardiac MRI, troponin and biochemical marker and all this thing one has to do. And depending upon that, you can, uh, you know, the, the physician has to assign whether he or she can go to a play, uh, to play or not. But the point is two weeks, no uh, shiver exercise. And after the pre-COVID exercise can be uh, done returnedly, uh, you know, based upon uh, the clinical status and it can be done in, you say, uh, four to five weeks or so. So thank you very much for uh, uh, hearing me with patients. And the most important one is to uh, uh, focus is web will come, the different web, third web, four, all this stuff. But you have to focus on your metabolic health, your cardio fitness and exercise medicine. We have to uh, see and uh, we have to incorporate all the physical activity, a positive lifestyle. So the physiological adaptation should be there. And that is not only important for performance, but also for human performance and health. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs>
Thank you, sir, for the quick presentation. I thank all the chairpersons and speakers for a wonderful session. Now I would like to request our chairpersons to kindly facilitate our speakers. Now Dr. Soumya Saxena for Dr. Barun Sharma. Thank you, ma'am.